Wouldn't it be awesome if we could reach people all over the world with the good news of Jesus without ever having to leave the comfort of our living rooms? Welcome to Let's Go, where you will hear about lives that have been transformed by the power of God. You'll see and hear real stories of real people going to real places far away whose lives are changed as God uses them to impact the lives of others for His glory. Get ready to see people experience God's love and power. Let's go. Welcome to Let's Go. I'm Pat McGuffin, one of your co-hosts today, along with Tony Nardella. Tony, we have a great show lined up for people. Tell us about it. Yes, well, we are going to focus today on our missionary efforts during the pandemic to reach people overseas without actually traveling there. Today, our special guest is a young lady by the name of Hannah Ward, who has traveled overseas by video dozens of times in the last year or so. And she's got some incredible stories about what God has done when the Word of God gets preached. Wow, that's going to be a great time that we'll have with her. We'll have a time of exhortation, encouragement, and prayer for you. So hang on and let's go. Anna Ward, welcome to Let's Go. Thank you so much for having me here, Pat. You have been on some amazing mission trips with never leaving the country. How does that work? Yeah, it's amazing. So during the pandemic, the Lord opened an opportunity for Heart of Titus to start reaching hundreds of people in South America all over Zoom. So what we do, instead of just getting on a plane, we get on our laptops. We open them up and the Spirit of the Lord takes over. As long as we say yes to Him, He does the rest. Oh my goodness. So you're you're actually communicating with people in faraway places, but you're not having to be there. Yes, it's amazing. We get to minister to hundreds of people without even going there. And it's really cool because a lot of times when we start praying for people or we give prophetic words, they will be spot on to what the people in South America were already asking the Lord that very same day. And it's so cool to see how the Holy Spirit isn't limited with technology or with just the means that we use transportation, um, but that He is able to move no matter where we are, whenever uh, we allow Him to move, He does. Now you started this with um, Brittany, I believe, at, at some point. Uh, Brittany, what was it like to to work with Hannah and help her learn this? Oh my goodness, we have had so much fun. <laughs> we actually minister with a whole team, and it's been fun because a lot of the girls, um, some of them wanted to go there, but because of the pandemic, we couldn't leave. We couldn't get there to be with the people. So this was a way for us to actually connect with them even through the pandemic. And so the work of God was not stopped by what happened, but we have had a blast. We have seen God move in powerful ways, even having you know people in South America, and then all of us even couldn't leave our homes. So we were all ministering from our own homes and we were watching God move and all of us simultaneously would feel the Lord as his presence began to fall upon us and the people. And we were so excited to watch what God was able to do. Now, do you all have like degrees in technology for some university or something? How did you figure out how to do this? No, I can, I barely know how to work Google. My gosh, (laughs) I figured out how to do it just like everybody else. We just jumped on the bandwagon with Zoom and we figured, well, we got the word of the Lord to minister to the nations. We can't just lay on the couch. We have to steward that word well. And so we just learned through trial and error. We made mistakes, but practice makes perfect. Now you have ministered to several different countries in South America, but you've never been to South America. (laughs) I have never been to South America, but I've been on over 25 Zoom calls now. And so I feel like I live there at this point. I've made friends down there. And what's cool about Holy Spirit is that Um, when you are connected in the body of Christ, it doesn't really feel like that there's a barrier. You get to know people very well. And when you um, minister the love of God to them, there's a vulnerability there to where friendships and relationships are easy to form. Wow, now let me ask you, um, how how many years ago did you learn Spanish fluently? (laughs) Um, (laughs) As of today, zero. (laughs) How does that work? Well, we have translators. And um, I actually have a pretty cool story with my translator, if I can share that. 
Okay, so um, I was ministering to a group in Ecuador and I just felt the Lord said, somebody's here for healing. And I asked, totally expecting it to be one of the church members, um, but I said, is there pain in anybody's right shoulder? And it was our translator. And she was caught off guard. She thought, oh, I'm over here serving and the Lord sees me. And it was so cool to see how not only did he love her so well, but he completely healed her when we prayed for her healing. Yeah, we love our translators. We have become really good friends with them. And it's been fun to watch how God actually opening up the opportunity to minister in this way that because we don't know Spanish, they're actually able to step into their calling and their purpose to minister the gospel with us. And so we formed great relationships with them. And through doing online ministry, we're actually able for the girls here um, to learn how to minister through a translator before they even put their feet on, on foreign soil. And so they're able to actually learn what is that like? How do you flow with a translator? You know, how do you minister one sentence at a time, <laughs> basically? <laughs> and so they all feel so equipped now. It's really been like a missions training camp doing this online. So now when we go, Hannah knows full well how to preach the gospel and minister through a translator. Wow, so yes. then, then let me ask, when you say preach the gospel, so you're preaching, you're teaching, you're ministering, you're prophesying, um, all, all over Zoom. Yes, yes, it's, it's really cool. Um, I have a huge passion for all of those things, and I never thought that I would be able to do it um, like I've been doing it this past year and a half here in America. Um, I think because the opportunity was just, um, it wasn't really presented yet, and we should always go around to our neighborhoods and wherever we are preaching the gospel. But I just knew that there was something in my heart that the Lord was saying, no, you're supposed to do this to the nations. Mm -hmm. I just never expected it to be all over a laptop. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, many of these um, Zoom calls and Facebook Live calls uh, you've done together, and Brittany's been the lead. Brittany, can you share a little bit about how this has impacted Hannah's development as somebody who really just feels a call to preach to the nations? Uh, wow, she has such a call on her life and a passion for lost people to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. And so being able to have this platform where we could just kind of throw her out, I kind of like to push the baby birds out the nest and let them fly, <laughs> you know, let them see that they can fly with the Lord. And so we have seen that she got to step out of that nest and go out there and preach the gospel. And it really, I would love for her to share. We had the most fun story um, just a couple of weeks ago when we did a call online. And this was for many nations across South America that joined the call. So will you share about how you got to preach the gospel? Of course, I just wanted to start out by saying that I wasn't in my room praying and fasting all day. I was tired after a long day of work. And I honestly just thought to myself, how am I gonna do this call? Um, and about 45 minutes before the call, that's when Brittany said, hey, you up for preaching the gospel to our entire group? And I was immediately like, yes, I wanna do that. No, I was <laughs> like, oh my gosh, me? And so I just say that because it doesn't take a special person. It just takes a yes and a willing vessel. And so when we get on the call, I felt the Holy Spirit begin to move and I opened my, my mouth and he spoke. Um, we preached the gospel to about almost 70 people and seven unbelievers gave their life to the Lord that day. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and they all received a prophetic word of encouragement of how much God loves them and his amazing plans for their life. Now this is all over Zoom. <laughs> you know, we're not wow. there laying hands on people, you know, but the Lord was touching them. He was moving and drawing them in. And we've had a lot of other calls together where people have been physically yes. healed. That has been so fun. Can you share another fun testimony of how you've seen the Holy Spirit move through some of our calls? Yes, of course. So one of my favorite testimonies is um, from Ecuador, I believe. And there was this one girl, we could tell that she was just not feeling well the entire call. Bless her heart, she still joins. And she was sick in bed. And we felt, we both felt the Lord just really impressed on our heart that she needed a healing. And so we asked what was wrong. She had a high fever. She just was not feeling it. 
And um, so we prayed healing over her. She started crying. She felt the presence of the Lord first come into her heart. I believe that we actually gave prophetic encouragement before the healing happened because the Lord doesn't just want to heal to touch your physical bodies. He wants to heal all of you. And so she was spiritually healed, emotionally healed, and physically healed. By the time that we were done with the call, she was feeling so much better. She looked better. And her mom was in the other room, and she even testified <laughs> that she was better. So praise the Lord. That's incredible. So you're sitting here in your house in the United States, and you're in your house, and your other <laughs> team members are in different houses. And we're talking to 70 people in a bunch of different countries, like, a, you know, mm -hmm. somewhere in South America. <laughs> and, and this girl experiences the healing and saving power of Jesus Christ. Yes. And you didn't buy a ticket and you didn't have to get a visa or anything like that. I never even laid my hands on her. I mean, this is how much the Lord is eager to heal and love on his people. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says those who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. Yeah. So everybody on these calls, they come hungry and expectant. And it's the perfect just scenario for the Lord to come in and say, OK, I am willing. <laughs> wow. One of my other uh, favorite things about doing online ministry is how it's cultivated a love for the people mm -hmm. of the other nations before we even get there. And so you have this whole group yes. of people who maybe never saw themselves as missionaries or they never even considered going to the nations. And after meeting the people, you can't not love them. You just fall in love with them. And so it has stirred this passion for the nations in people right here all online. Boy, thank you so much for these great things. And Hannah, what you were saying is so important. There are probably people that are looking at that screen right now thinking, I'm not in South America, I'm right here, but I need the Lord. Would you mind looking in that camera and leading people in prayer? Absolutely. If that was you feeling a tug on your heart when I was sharing the gospel, that's just Holy Spirit wanting to bring you home to the heart of Jesus. So I want you to repeat after me in prayer. So dear Jesus, I thank you so much for coming to this earth to save me from my sins. I thank you, Father, for dying a sinner's death so that I could be made whole. I repent of my sins, and I believe that you are the Son of God, that you are the one true God. Jesus, I thank you for living in my heart now. I invite you in to completely fill my life. I surrender all to you. Here I am, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Mm. Thank you so much, Hannah, Brittany, Pastor Tony. Thank you for being with us today. Isn't our young guest full of life, well-spoken and eager to use what she has learned to bless others? When everyone else was just hunkering down and waiting for the pandemic to pass, she found a way to minister to God's people overseas from her house. Don't you just want to throw more gas on her fire? Now we're going to go to a time of prayer, and why don't we all ask God to show us what we can do to reach out to others in their time of need, even if it's a bit challenging or even inconvenient. We're so glad that you joined us for prayer. I've asked my friend Hannah to stick around for prayer. Hannah, thank you for being here. Of course. Um, I know that God probably stirred your heart as we were all talking today for something that you'd like to really pray over our viewers. Yes, he did. I really felt that Holy Spirit wanted to break off any fear of technology, of having um, a special skill set off of some of our viewers that you want to do what we talked about today, but Zoom calls and computers and phones just seem really intimidating. So let's pray together for courage to be released to you and for fear to be completely broken off. So Jesus, I just thank you for our viewers today, Lord. I thank you, Father, that they are watching this show not by accident, but on purpose, Lord. And I just pray for all fear to be broken off, for discouragement to be broken off. I thank you, Father, that you use any willing vessel. You used a donkey so you can use us. And I just release courage, bravery, and boldness into these viewers. I thank you, Father, for clarity of mind, for clarity of spirit, and that they will feel the tug of your Holy Spirit on their heart to get up and go. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Oh, amen. You know, while you were praying, I was thinking that there's probably viewers 
who heard your testimony and it like clicked for them that they never saw themselves as missionaries before, but Mm -hmm. this seems like something they might be able to do. So I just want to bless you in the name of Jesus to step into your purpose with him, to stand firm in your calling. And I just believe that God is stirring hearts right now. So I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would have the courage and the faith to say yes, to see yourself as Jesus sees you and step deeply into your calling and your purpose in him. I pray this blessing over you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And while Brittany was praying, I just felt Holy Spirit reveal to me that um, there's some healings that he's wanting to do today. And I just saw um, some pictures of uh, a person who has severe back pain, a person who has severe pain on their feet, specifically the bottom of their feet, and even someone who deals with seizure, seizures due to um, a head trauma. And so I just release healing in the name of Jesus over you. I thank you, Father, that your son died, not just for our soul salvation, but to heal us. I thank you, Father, that your word says that by his stripes, we are healed. So we just release the healing power of Jesus over them. All pain completely goes in Jesus' name and all disease completely goes in Jesus' name. Oh, amen. I could see also the feet that God is healing someone with an injury on the bottom of their feet. So I'm believing that in faith. And as Hannah was praying, I was seeing someone with a broken heart, that something has happened and your heart feels shattered, a trauma that you have been through. And I just see the Lord coming in and tenderly holding you and healing that wound in your heart. You don't have to stay like this anymore. So I declare in Jesus name that a deep healing is coming upon you to heal Feel the trauma that hit your heart. I pray this over you right now that you will know the precious love of Jesus, that the love of God would wash over the pain that came from men, that you will be healed in the name of Jesus. And listen, I hear this encouragement. You will love again. You will love again. You are not broken. You are made whole in his presence right now in Jesus name. And I want to encourage everybody else. If if you have a prayer request, you can call us. There's a number on the screen. Our, Our website is at the bottom as well. You can also go for more encouragement to YouTube, to Heart of Titus and watch more episodes like this and pray with us. But listen, we want you to call. We want to partner with you in believing God for a miracle. So thank you so much for praying with us. Hannah, thank you so much for joining us today. Of course, my pleasure. Love always finds a way, doesn't it? When someone we love is hurting, we can't stop thinking about it. We can't stop wondering how we can help take their pain away. That's just the nature of love, isn't it? The Apostle Paul wrote, Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. In other words, love never stops believing there's a way to help someone out. It finds hope in just about any option and puts up with anything to help the other person. Isn't that why we love Jesus so much? He put up with death, even on a cross, so that the ones he loved could be saved. That's who God is. He is love. And all through the scriptures, we have the testimony of God helping his loved ones get out of trouble. For example, when the Jews were made slaves in Egypt, the Bible says that God heard their groaning and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. God saw the people of Israel and God knew. God didn't bury his head in the sand. He heard the groaning of his people and he could no longer just sit back and do nothing. He had to do something. So he came up with a plan to help them. Out of the burning bush, he called Moses saying, come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel out of Egypt. God almost always chooses people to help other people out of their troubles. In this case, however, Moses was called, but not too willing. 
He made lots of excuses to try to get out of the call. What if the people don't listen to me? What if the people won't believe me? But the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? He said, a staff. And he said, throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses ran from it. Pharaoh had a powerful army and Moses had just a simple shepherd's staff. But God used that staff in the hands of Moses to destroy the Egyptians. He used that staff in Moses' hands to perform supernatural acts, including the parting of the Red Sea, that set the Jews free from slavery. Although Moses saw himself as weak and unable to do anything, God took what was in his hand and turned it into a supernatural weapon of mass destruction of God's enemies. What's in your hand? Do you have something simple that God can turn into a supernatural weapon of mass destruction of God's enemies? During the pandemic, we were faced with something no one in our generation had ever faced before. The threat of getting sick and even dying was all around us. Fear had gripped not just our nation, but the entire world. We were locked in our houses by government order. We couldn't go to restaurants or even to go out and get our hair cut. Our friends couldn't come over to visit, no Sunday dinner with our relatives, and even our kids had to stay home from school. What a challenge. Even the church suffered. Most church services around the world just stopped. Our missions organization had to cancel many trips that had been planned. Now pastors are commanded to feed the sheep and missionaries are commanded to go and make disciples, but all of that came to a screeching halt. But for many of us, love found a way. Like our special guest today, we soon discovered that the technology was in our hands to reach people by video. It wasn't very familiar to us, but pastors and missionaries all around the world figured out how to reach people in other places by video with God's love and power. As a result, the work of God has continued and many people around the world are continuing to hear the word and receive healing and God's great salvation. As you look at your life, you may think that you are too old or too weak or too poor to make a difference in the lives of others. But remember Moses, that when he offered his simple walking stick to the Lord, God used it to change the lives of millions. I challenge you today to express your faith in God by believing that he will take what little you have and turn it into an instrument of love for his glory. God bless you as you go in faith to love your neighbor. What a tremendous time talking about reaching the nations without even going there. It is amazing. It's fun. It's a way to actually, like Hannah said, you know, we have a call to the nations. We can't ignore that and sit on the couch just because we can't travel. So when we do these Zoom calls all over the planet, I guess it's just a way for us to show that um, we can connect to anyone anywhere. We do what we have to do. That's true. I mean, it's proof that God just can use whatever is in our hands. Like what Pastor Tony was talking about, how Moses had a staff and God used that to part the Red Seas. Mm -hmm. It's like God uses our phone and the Zoom app on our phone to part the Red Seas in people's hearts. Yeah. He does, and he does all over the planet. Pastor Tony, you've been doing this for quite some time. Well, yes, you know, I mean, like right from the beginning, you know, I, I, first of all, I just wanna say that I just absolutely hate not going um, but uh, but when you love people, you're going to find a way to reach out to them and communicate to them. And like, you know, you were saying before, Brittany and Hannah as well, you know, to have an opportunity any way we can to communicate with our friends and do what God has put in our heart to do, which is to reach people with the good news of Jesus Christ. I mean, I mean you, you almost have to do it. Absolutely. It, we were compelled is how I would say, yes. like the love of Christ compelled us. And we were so grateful that he had provided a way, even through our phones, that when we couldn't be there, we could still love on them. It's not the same. We do miss going. We really want to go. But man, it was so beautiful to be able to love the people when we couldn't be there to wrap our arms around them. 
We will be back soon, but it was a great way to be able to go when we couldn't physically go. You know, I loved how Hannah decided that she wasn't going to wait till she could go, and she got mentored by you, and, and in the process, she began seeing miracles take place across the sea, and she wasn't even there. It has been an incredible thing to see that God is not limited by either our shortcomings or locations. You know, mm -hmm. He meets us. He actually uses our weaknesses. And it almost felt like a weakness not to be able to travel, but the Lord was like, I'm way ahead of this game. I know exactly what to do. And He made a way where there was no way. And Hannah, like she said, she was just willing and said yes. So really anybody can be used by God in this way. They just have to say yes. Mm -hmm. They have to be willing to overcome um, uncomfortable situations. Um, we had to learn a technology. I mean, people all over the world have had to learn mm -hmm. how to use Zoom, Facebook Live, and a variety of other things that they didn't know how to use before. Um, but on the other hand, it's a little bit easier than spending a whole bunch of money for an airplane ticket and uh, waiting in line at customs at another airport or whatever and eating food you're not comfortable mm -hmm. with either. <laughs> You know, it's great to be able to go there without actually going there. Um, you get to see people of all ages, young and old, using this, and they're from everywhere. You can have a meeting with people from five countries or more. You know, some of our Zoom calls were like multiple countries. We're also people from multiple states in the United States who've come together. I have people on my team who live in Texas and are a part of our team and we're all ministering together to South America via Zoom. And so it's a way for the body to really come together and do ministry together. And my encouragement to the viewers today would be that if you are wondering how is God gonna make a way to do the thing that he's called me to do, he is a creative God. Just ask him and let him show you how he intends to use you and how he intends to use you in this season. Don't wait till you have the funds or you feel like you're more prepared. Step in and trust him because he will make a way. Thank you so much. I tell you what, what a great story that we heard about going without going. <laughs> Thank you all. Do you have something that God can use to bless others? I encourage you to use what God has given you for His glory. We know that it could be a little scary at times, but God wants to equip you for the work He has created you to do. Now we have resources on our website that will encourage you in your walk with the Lord. Our website's on the screen and there you can watch some teachings that will equip you, or you can watch an episode of Let's Go that you may have missed, or you could sign up for our free monthly email newsletter, or you can partner with us in this ministry of telling the whole world of the great love of our God. Thank you for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you in our next episode of Let's Go.